Hi YouTubers! We've gotten a few requests for more instructions on how to remove the trim from our 1987 Brome in preparation for painting, so we thought we'd give you a few tips. This also applies to 1980-1993 rear wheel drive DeVilles and Fleetwood Bromes, which are all the same body style. First, remember, this is an advanced do-it-yourself project. It's substantially more complicated than it looks, but with a little patience, some skills, and the right tools, you can make it happen. Next, remember that these cars are 35 to 40 years old, and a lot of the trim's mounting pieces are made of plastic. Parts are going to break, and they aren't available at local auto parts stores. The best source for replacing broken pieces is going to be either eBay or your local auto body paint and supply store. If something does break, save as much of it as you can and take it to the local auto body paint store to see if they have something that'll do the job. If that doesn't work out, eBay is a good option. Another tip for beginners is to have a number of plastic sealable sandwich bags to hold the screws, nuts, bolts, and other parts you remove. Use one bag for each section you're working on and label them. This will help you when you put this jigsaw puzzle back together. Let's start at the front of the car. The trim around the headlamps is easily removed using a Torx screwdriver. That's the one with the star-shaped head. Simply remove all the screws and gently pull the headlamp bezels away from the car. The chrome frame around the grille is a little more complicated. You'll need to work under the hood. Start by using an upholstery tool to remove the large buttons from the dust cover above the radiator. Once you remove that dust cover, you can use deep sockets, and there are at least two different sizes needed, to remove the nuts from the metal studs that hold the chrome frame in place. Once the nuts are removed, the chrome frame will pull out from the front of the car. The hood ornament is easily removed using a crescent wrench to loosen the nut on the bottom of the stud. Next, the small spear tips are removed using the upholstery trim tool by slipping the tool between the spear and the body and gently pulling up. There are friction keepers that hold the spears in place, so no screws are present. They do make plastic trim tools that won't scratch the paint, but if you're removing the trim, you're probably going to repaint, so scratch away. The long spears on the hood are held in place from behind by a screw at each end and trim clips attached to the hood. Those clips are defeated using an upholstery trim tool. Some will stay on the car, others will pop off and stay inside the spear. Remove them all from either the spear or the hood of the car and save them for reuse. The rear hood trim is held in place from underneath by small screws. The antenna bezel simply lifts off using the upholstery tool. The next parts to remove are the wheel opening moldings. Those are held in place by screws and you'll want to have a stubby screwdriver or a small socket set with a screwdriver tip to get at the screws near the wheel where a regular screwdriver won't fit. Now prepare yourself for the fact that those screws may be corroded and will need to be drilled out. The rocker moldings will be removed next. The molding in front of the front wheel is held in place by nuts and bolts accessed on the bottom and rear of the molding. Wear eye protection because the road dirt is going to fall into your eyes. The rocker moldings on the doors are held in place by nuts on each end of the door and clips in the middle. Once the nuts are removed from the end, simply push the molding upward while pulling the bottom out and the molding will pop free. Save all the clips and nuts together as they're interchangeable. The main rocker molding that runs between the wheels can only be removed once the wheel opening moldings are removed. They have screws on the top side and the bottom side, and some of those screws are going to be corroded and will probably need to be drilled out. The rocker molding behind the rear wheel is held in place by screws under the wheel opening molding and a spring-loaded clip on the rear fender filler. There are also clips under the middle of the molding similar to the ones on the doors. The door edge guards are removed by using light force as they have no clips or screws and just push into place. The trim around the vinyl top above the trunk is removed the same way as the hood spears are removed and those clips will almost all break, so have a source ready to buy replacements. On pre-1987 Bromes and DeVilles, the trunk lip has a molding that bolts and screws on from behind. After 1987, only the license plate frame has a trim that is screwed on. The trunk key cover is riveted on and has to be carefully drilled out. All the name plates and wreaths are held on using two-sided tape. 
Remove them gently when the car is sitting in the warm sun to make the glue soft. Clean the old tape from the back of the emblems using Goof Off or an orange solvent cleaner. Then buy new 3M two-sided tape and reuse the emblems. By now, you're left with the door trim. The chromed spears that follow the hood spears are held in place by clips, no screws at all, and they can be removed using the upholstery trim tool. The only way to remove the door handles, locks, weather stripping, and mirrors is to take the interior door panels and glass out of the doors. That includes the small quarter glass on the rear doors. Now, you can remove the handles and locks without removing the glass, but the mirrors and the top weather strip cannot be removed without removing the glass. And if you need YouTube University to tell you how to do that, you're probably in over your head, and you should turn this project over to the professionals. But even if you decide not to remove the door panels or the window glass, you should now be well ahead of the game at prepping your car for paintwork. Please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe for more videos. If you need more information, drop us a line at westofthelakeclc at gmail.com. Thanks for watching this video from the Chicago area region of the Cadillac and LaSalle Club.